Hi, I'm Adam C and welcome to the NEC for the Classic Motor Show with the question, is this the type of car that the government wants us to be driving around with its 5.8 litre Cleveland Ford V8? Let me tell you. So I'm not talking just D Tomazos. We don't just have to pick D Tomazos, although it would be lovely if these are the cars that are on the road from 2024 onwards, because these Morgans fit the bill as well. Now, whilst it looks like this might be exactly what I'm talking about, this doesn't actually fit the bill, because this is a Mark IV Cobra, so it was built in Brooklands in 1991. So it isn't one of the original 60s cars, so isn't ULES compliant. Cars are only ULES exempt from 1973, backwards. I was going to say onwards, no, backwards. The cars up to 1973 don't have to pay ULEZ, don't have to pay tax, and don't have to pay for MOTs. They don't need one. So all the other cars on this stand, including this AC Ace, are ULEZ compliant, so you can drive this around London completely for free. ULEZ stands for the Ultra Low Emissions Zone, for those not in the know, and though it's not entirely relevant to this video, I just wanted to show you this Jag. We've also got the XJ220 concept car, fitted with the V12 and Lambo doors, which is what they initially had intended to have when built. So we'll leave the XJR9 behind and find some of the cars that you're not going to believe Sadiq Khan allows you to drive around London and completely free of charge. Now this SL again doesn't quite fit the bill, I just wanted to show you it because it's very cool. But let me tell you about MOTs. A car doesn't need an MOT if it's over 40 years old and that rolls forward each year. However, that is void if they've done extensive work to the car's body, chassis or engine such as fitting electric motors. So what they've done is they've made this car go from an un MOTable car that was maybe tax exempt before to still tax exempt because it's electric, but now needs an MOT. It's all wrong. So this is the electric classic car section and they do just that. They turn classic cars into electric vehicles to ready them for the future. But as we've been finding out, some of these cars are already ready for the future because you don't need to pay tax, you don't need to pay ULEZ, and you don't need to MOT them already. So why turn a pre-73 car into an electric car in the current state we've got? However, most of the crowd are around the Testarossa, which is an 80s car, so it doesn't fall into the ULEZ compliant category or any other of the categories that we've been discussing so far. Now, this is a curious one. It is a Hawk. Cobra 289, which the DVLA says was registered in 2009. However, they also say it meets the ULEZ emission standards with that V8. So due to the age of the engine, it's ULEZ compliant. So you can drive most of these cars around London without annoying any of the green hippies in the area apparently, according to Sadiq Khan. The same can be said for these GT40s, but unfortunately not for the Honda NSXs or the Nobles. You've got the M600, M12 GTOs, M400s as well. Now I was crossing my fingers on this one, but I've just done a check on a Dodge Viper, and they do have to pay ULEZ, probably because they're a 90s car rather than pre-73, and also because a lot of imported vehicles, they can't get the data for the emissions on an import, so because of that, they're just straight away, no, you're not compliant. So my chaser cannot drive into London without the £12.50 ULEZ charge. And remember folks, if you want to drive around an accurate replica of the Porsche 917K, you do not need to pay the ULEZ charge. Now let's talk about tax. So tax works similar to the MOT exemption, so it's the 40 year rolling rule. And it's not road tax anymore, no, road tax was abolished decades ago. We don't pay to be on the roads using road tax. That is emissions tax that you're paying on a vehicle. So it's based on emissions. But cars before the year of 1983 don't have to pay emissions tax. And that leads me neatly on to this fully custom Rolls-Royce. This coach-built Rolls-Royce became the most powerful car in the world in 1977 and features a 27-litre Merlin aeroplane engine. And you can see exactly where I'm going with this. This 27-litre Rolls-Royce is ULEZ free tax-free. I don't know about MOT because it has been quite extensively modified, so probably does need an MOT, but you don't need to pay ULEZ on this 27-litre Merlin engined Rolls-Royce. No ultra-low emission zone tax for you, sir. So just think, you've got a pre-2005 car, maybe an old Ford Focus. No, you have to pay £12.50 a day. You've got a diesel car, pre-2015. That's the cutoff for diesel cars. Most diesel cars after that are fine. No, £12.50 a day. Then someone rolls past in a 27-litre Rolls-Royce. 
No, ultra low emissions, you could. The best thing about it is on the website it says you do not need to pay a daily US charge to drive in the zone and are helping to improve air quality across London in your 27 litre rolls. But more evidence of this is very clear with this entire section. This is the classic car auction at the NEC. There are hundreds of classic cars and thousands of potential buyers purely because, well, maybe partially because, or maybe it should be because, these cars can be driven for free. Other than fuel, that is it. So that's all you need to pay for a beautiful Jaguar E-Type Series 1. Just as an example, not all of them, however, you've got the NSX, Ferrari 360 and Esprit. Those will cost you a little bit of tax, but the government just aren't taxing classic cars. But look at this for a surprise, a Honda Civic Type R EP3 in a classic car auction. It's only done 17,000 miles and the estimate is between 10 to 15,000 pounds. And even a James Bond Aston Martin Vanquish whose rockers has fallen off. The chassis number even ends in 007. It's the seventh of seven UK press cars promoting the film. But this lineup of cars pretty much sums up most classic car auctions. Sierra RS Cosworth, Ford Capri, Ford Escort RS Cosworth, Ford Escort Series 1 RS, Ford Sierra Sapphire Cosworth, Ford Escort Mark 1, Ford Escort RS Turbo, Ford Escort RS 2000, Ford Focus RS Mark 1, Ford Escort RS, Ford Sierra RS 500 Cosworth, Ford Sapphire RS RS, Ford Escort RS Cosworth Rally Car and the Mark 1 RS 2000 on the end, to name but a few. But I know what you're all wanting to know, is Shrek ULEZ free? Well yes he is, because he's a pre-1973 vehicle. And most of the time, if the beach involves London, which all of them don't, you don't have to pay the ULEZ in a beach buggy. But whilst this whole video seems like a bit of an annoyance to our mayor Sadiq Khan, I'm going to move on from this massive mother quacker and on to the Japanese section. Not a lot of the cars in this next section will be ULEZ compliant or tax free or MOT exempt but I'll try and find some and some other cars that I know that you guys are going to love. But before I do a final hurrah, we have a Dodge Charger which is ULEZ compliant and all of these hot rods including this 100E Ford Popular with a large 5.7 V8 which are all ULEZ compliant, a 32 Ford Coupe with a 4.6 litre V8 which is ULEZ compliant, another V8 in this Ford Cabriolet which is ULEZ compliant and Dougie Lampkin doing stunts next to a Skoda Fabia which is not ULEZ compliant. So figure that, if you've got an old £2,000 car from 2004, you can't drive it in London without paying £12.50. What you need to do is buy an older car with a 5, 6 litre V8 with far worse emissions, but that's the ultra low emission zone compliancy in a nutshell. Oh, and by the way, this boob is ULEZ compliant. And just before I've reached the Japanese section, I've come across this BMW 2002, which brings me back to the MOT exemption part of the government's rules. So, because this car is older than 40 years old, if you got this onto the road, you would not need to MOT this car. So you can legally drive around in a rusty heap like this. Now, there must be something, surely, that will stop people from doing this. But that's why it seems so bizarre that the cars that need an MOT the most, the over 40 year old cars, are the ones that are like, nah, they're exempt now. Because you used to have to. I still have done for my MGB, but still getting MOTs to this day, but you don't legally need one. I think it would be recommended to get an MOT, and if the police did pull you over and the car wasn't roadworthy, they could take it off you. So there is that, but it's just weird. Who benefits from the MOT exemption? But the wait is over. I'm going to save you from any more ULEZ rants just so I can show you the Japanese section of the show. Welcome to the end of your life and I promise it's going to hurt. Well, that's not very pleasant. Let's spice it up by seeing what else there is. We have a Subaru Owners Club and then on to the Celica Club with one of the most modified cars we've seen so far today. Check out the wide arches on the Celica. Then over to the Skylines with the C110 2000 GTR concept replica race car next to an R33 GTR. Got the Hakusuka next door as well and an R35 GTR beyond that. This one is the motor car that we saw at Adam Seafest this year. 
There will be one next year, details to follow very shortly. Next up we have the 300ZX Owners Club with their V6 twin turbo on display with absolutely no room to play with in that engine bay. And they bring us neatly on to the Honda S2000s which are just opposite the Nissan 300Cs. Next up in the darkness we have a collection of four FD Mazda RX-7s, an assortment of three Datsun Z cars, and finally the section I've been wanting to show you the most at this show, the Mark IV Supra Owners Club. We've got a twin turbo straight six example, automatic, a twin turbo aero top, which is also automatic, and you might have noticed in the corner the Tom's Castrol livery on a Mark IV Supra wide body. This is a custom wide body kit that was fitted by Goblin Works. My good friends Helen and Ant had a big part to play in this car. It had a previous livery, which you can see on the information board here, but now it's just been meowed at and is beautiful in the Castrol livery with the wide arches, replicating the car that you all know and love from Gran Turismo. That is outstanding it's literally only just been finished this is the first time it's been seen and this will be going to plenty of the shows in the country next year hopefully at adam c fest as well if it does i'll put it on a pedestal at the show in the top 25 section take a look at that rear end of the castrol super this is road legal as well that's just been completed with this gorgeous livery definitely a highlight of the show as well again another automatic example they're very quick with the auto boxes and drag races actually favor the auto box in the supra there you go the three-quarter angle of the Castrol Mark IV Toyota Supra. But that was the NEC Classic Show for this year. Let me know which out of all these cars might be your favorite, whether it even be the RWB 993 Cabriolet. See, there's at quite a few events, always a crowd favorite. So uh, that's the ULEZ scam, I mean tax, I mean scheme that Sadiq Khan has set up for all of us that live near London. Who knows where it will next expand to. So I hope you enjoyed that video from the NEC. Go follow me on all my social channels for the updates, highlights and pictures that I take at meets like this and more. But for now, thanks for watching.